Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about Coulomb's law. I mean, we are going to start with Coulomb's law. At least we are going to learn many other things also. In last video, I said that uh, like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. So uh, I said that uh, there is a force of attraction or repulsion between two charges, but how do they attract or repel? Uh, they just don't do as it uh, as there is right. Uh, so they're guided by certain laws. Uh, certain experiments have shown that uh, the force of attraction or repulsion between those two charges is uh, proportional to the to their magnitudes, and it is inversely proportional to the distance between those two charges. So uh, scientists named Coulomb have has worked out and uh, found out relationship. Let me give them. It is f is equal to k q1 q2 by r square. Now q1 and q2 are, are two charges which are taken into consideration, and r is the distance between those two charges. Well, k is a constant. Uh, it's got a value of uh, 9 into 10 to power 9. Let me write units. Newton meter square per coulomb square. Uh, because when you place this k here, finally this Coulomb square and this Coulomb square is cancelled, and finally meter square meter square is cancelled. You end up with newtons, which is a unit of force. Uh, this is not complete. Let me have something else. R cap, because we know that force is a vector, right? Uh, this is also written in a detailed form as uh, one by four by epsilon naught into q1 q2 by r square r cap this means that uh, the direction of the force is uh, along the line joining the two charges and the k the proportionality constant is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught now you know what is pi but epsilon naught it has got a value of 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 and uh, you can write the units c square and power minus 1 and power 2. Actually, this epsilon naught, uh, whenever you write this naught, it means that uh, it is the it is related to space. Here epsilon is the permittivity, so epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. So this law holds only if the two charges are placed in vacuum. For free space. If you place them in some other medium, then you will have to place some other epsilon whose value is different. So this constant differs. The law is the same, but just this constant differs. So uh, let's move further. Now, uh, if our two charges are positive, uh, we see that q1, q2, the product comes out to be positive, and uh, hence the net force is positive. And if the q1, q2 are negative as well, you get positive. But if one of those two charges is positive and, uh, and the other is negative, you will find that the force comes out to be negative. Now, I said yesterday, uh, I said in the last video, that uh, the that like charges repel each other, right? So when it is case with when it is the case with two positive charges or two negative charges, you get positive sign. Mm -hmm. And when it is the case with uh, unlike charges, you get a negative sign. So, if your force comes out to be negative, it means that one of the two charges is positive and, uh, and the other is negative. So, those are unlike charges, hence the force is attractive. That is what I want to say. And uh, if you get your force to be positive, it means that they are like charges. They may be positive or negative, but they are like charges. So, your force is repulsive. I hope you understood till now. Uh, let's move further. Uh, now, you you know how to find the relation uh, between... Uh, you know how to find the relation... Let me tell again. You know how to find the force between two charges, right? Now, what if there is a system of charges? Say... You have a charge here, you have another charge here, you have another charge here. This one is Q1, Q2, and Q3. 
So what is the net net force experienced by this charge? It experiences some force. Say uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are three of them are positive. So it experiences a force of repulsion in this direction due to this force uh, due to this charge, and also a force of repulsion in this direction due to this charge. So uh, what you have to do here is you just take the vector sum of these two these two forces. Uh, if you have more number of charges, it is the same procedure actually. How many ever number of charges you have, you just take all the vector sums of all the pairs of all the forces due to all the pairs. So your net force comes out to be something like this: the vector sum of these two. Now uh, let us uh, let us solve a small problem. Say you have. A you have three charges which are placed at the corners of an equilateral triangle. I'm sorry, I'm not a good artist, but uh, that's an equilateral triangle. Uh, let's name them ABC. And you have the center here, which is centroid, circumcenter, it doesn't matter because it's an equilateral triangle. Name it O. Now you place three charges. Of equal magnitude and sign Q Q Q at these corners, and uh, place uh, another charge of uh, magnitude capital Q at the center. Of course, even this is of same sign. So now I want to find what is the net force experienced by this uh, bigger charge by these three charges. What I do now? First, I'll find the force due to this charge on this. It is in something like it is in this direction. Name it F1, which comes out to be K K Q Q by R. Okay, let the side be L. So this comes out to be L root 3 by 2 into 2 by 3. This is L by root 2. So R square becomes 3 L, L square by 3. So this is your F1 in the direction AO, right? AO cap or AO bar something. And similarly, you get some force due to B here, say F2, which is nothing but uh, same 3k q q by L square in this direction, right? And similarly, you get a force here, which is of same magnitude, square in direction OC, right? Let me write OC cap. Now, this uh, vector sum of these three forces, what is it? Uh, actually, uh, since this uh, figure is symmetrical along this axis and this axis and this axis and uh, all the angles are equal, so obviously we can, uh, obviously my intuition tells that uh, the net force should be zero. However, if you are not satisfied, you can still go for this, what? Take a coordinate system here x y and resolve these components this one this one and finally if you add all the components you still get the same result the same so uh, this is fine but what if I want to find the force on this charge by these three charges well the method is same you get some force you do this one here find it out it comes up to be some three uh, some k q q by l square and some force due to this direction k q q by l square and some force due to this thing in this direction which is uh, uh, root 3k 3k small q capital q by r square well you have the calculation and finally you get the answer to be 3k q q by l square plus root 3k q square by l square this is the magnitude and the direction is ob this is the direction i strongly recommend you to work this out although i didn't okay let's move on further let's move further i'll tell you something called as electric field what is this field uh, I can say it is the influence or it is the effect of a charge uh, on its surroundings. 
well place a charge here say capital q if you place another charge q here you know that it experiences force of attraction or repulsion now how will this charge know that there's a charge here i mean that this charge is showing its effect here 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 everywhere of course the intensity of the effect varies that's what i'm going to show you or uh, say now uh well that's called as electric field the influence whatever we call it as it is denoted by e even this is a vector the other way to write a force is uh, q the charge into this is the another way of writing your force say if your small q is this the force experienced by this charge is this so you know that actual force is k q q by r square do r cap so what can we say from these two you get like uh, e is k q by r square and don't forget to include this because e is a vector so uh, i hope everything is clear that's it and uh, let's move further you know what is e now due to a single charge but what if there are multiple charges let me explain you i'll have to take a new slide uh if there are multiple charges say one minute i'm going to select my pen well if you have a charge here q1 here q2 here q3 what you do now you want to find the electric field at say this point find the electric field at this point due to q2 name it as e2 and uh, electric field due to q1 here name it as e1 and due to e3 i mean q3 name it as e3 the vector sum of these three gives you the net e at this point e is the same way so well uh, now me now you may ask me well we, we have a formula coulomb's law to find the force then what is the necessity of this electric field well it's not a necessity but uh, there's a significance for this field it gives you a way to determine or uh, characterize the environment to be specific the electrical environment uh, electrical environment of the charge which we take into, con into consideration uh, let's go on uh, next topic is uh, field lines so oh, since it's already 13 minutes uh, i'll better deal with this in next video bye